Queridos irmãos, queridas irmãs. Dear brothers and dear sisters, we are here for one more tutorial of the daily food in this series. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Book 6, entitled The New Law of the Kingdom of Heavens. All of the messages are by our brother Peter Jong. This week we are seeing week 3, which title is How to Walk in the Kingdom of Heavens. Last week we are seeing chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew speaking regarding the law of the kingdom of heaven. The Lord Jesus said that he did not come to uh, abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Not only to fulfill it, but even he uplifted the standard of the law in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament spoke only about what we did, but when the Lord Jesus came, he began to deal with our heart, began to change our person, because now he is taking us to a heavenly plane, is taking us to live a reality of the kingdom of heavens. Well, then on Monday we see this contrast of the reality and the appearance of the kingdom of heavens. A religious living at most will give us a living the appearance the kingdom this living of appearance only doing things outwardly will not qualify us to be the manifestation of the kingdom of heavens when the Lord comes back a living like that will not qualify us to receive the reward the Lord has to give to us as we saw last week or will qualify us to live in the kingdom when the Lord returns to be the manifestation of the kingdom and receive the reward it is to have the reality of the kingdom of heavens today. That is why the Lord said that our main characteristics to live the kingdom of heavens, it is to be poor in spirit. In Matthew 5 verse 3, the Lord said, Blessed, humble in spirit. In the King James Version, it, it says that blessed are the poor in spirit. Who are the poor in spirit, the ones who are repented, contrite in their hearts, with a broken spirit, a repented heart. They're not proud. They're not strong in themselves. They do not rely on their strength or their capacity, but they depend on God. They recognize everything they have comes from God. Everything that we are, everything that we have on this earth, came from God himself. Oh, Lord Jesus. May we to be those who are humble in our spirit, poor in our spirit, the humble heart and meek heart. In King James Version, in Isaiah 57, 14, let me read it to you. Here we read verse 13. She says, When you cry out, are you 14, and one shall say, heap it up, heap it up, prepare the way, take the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Lord Jesus opened this way for us when he died on the cross. He opened up a new and living way. This is in Hebrews 10, verses 19 and 20. This way was the way to the Spirit, the way to live and walk in God's presence. Those who live in the Spirit, can fulfill the law of the kingdom of heaven. Here we read, For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite, humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Hallelujah. These are the ones that the Lord dwells. These are the ones the Lord is. His presence. Not with the proud, with the, the, the lofty ones, those who trust in themselves. But the Lord's presence is with the one who is humble in spirit, the brokenhearted. So, dear brother and dear sister, to fulfill the requirement of the kingdom of heavens, to live the reality of the kingdom of heavens, 
to walk according to the standard of the kingdom of heavens, we have to have a repented heart, humble heart, to be pure in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heavens. Let us live in this heavenly plain, the repented heart, contrite heart, for the Lord to make us live this reality. In this way, we can live and walk in spirit, having the reality of the salt of the earth, the light of the world that the Lord said to us. Monday, Tuesday, even on Wednesday, we have a little bit of the review of what we saw in previous weeks. And then on Tuesday, it speaks of the salt of the earth and the light of the world. What is the salt of the earth and the light of the world? Brothers and sisters, it is to live according to what we are on this earth. The church today is to fulfill its function. The church function on earth it is to be salt to give taste and flavor, to give meaning to people's lives. Salt, it is that element that gives taste to food, right? Seasons the food. So our life must season people's lives. That is why on Tuesday, the title on Tuesday is, May I Pray for You? Saints, that's what we're doing today. May I pray for you? This very simple sentence, and single sentence, what can change people's lives, giving taste to their lives. Saints, this make people to be saved. In our daily living must be permeated of the gospel. The gospel, brothers and sisters, is not a privilege a small group of missionaries. It's not a, a privilege of only the dynamic co-porters, only those involved with co-porting every each day. But it is for all of us in our daily living, in our workplace, in our school, at the university, on the streets, in a public transportation, at a bank, at a bakery, anywhere we are. We can bring the salt of the earth, and it can also be the light of the world for people to see God's light in us, for people to be delivered out of darkness. That's what the Lord wants to each one of us. The gospel needs to be part of our living. That is how we walk in the kingdom of heavens, we live in the reality of the kingdom, and bringing people to also become these poor in spirit, Meeting those who are humble in their spirit, who are repentant, contrite. Maybe you may find somebody going through a difficulty. This moment he will be opened to receive the gospel. And then he asks, may I pray for you? This makes a whole difference. A difference in people's lives, giving flavor and grace of life to that people. His life begins to have meaning. Begins also to be enlightened, to be freed from living in darkness. Hallelujah. Let us practice. May I pray for you. This is for those who live the reality of the kingdom of heaven. So to fulfill the law, fulfill the standard of the kingdom of heaven. It's not just to have an outer living. It's not just for those who only live in the appearance, but for those who today are living the reality or living in the spirit. That is why we saw last week, once again, on Wednesday we remember that not for us to live in covet, to be freed from sin, that covetousness, the desire of the flesh, we live in the desires of the flesh, we are fitting desires of the flesh, brothers and sisters, the result is sin and death. Let us not feed covet. Let us not feed desires of our flesh. Let's put our flesh to starve. How? Walking in spirit. That is why Galatians 5.16 says that if we walk in spirit, 5.16 says that Walk in the Spirit shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So walk in the Spirit, it, it is the walk in the kingdom of heaven. How can we walk in the kingdom of heaven? Walking in the Spirit. On the one hand, in our daily living, we exercise our spirit. We live in the Spirit by calling on the name of the Lord, by seeking the Word, having a revering love to the Word of the Lord, as we saw in Isaiah 6-6, right? 
the one whom the Lord gives his attention to those who are humble in their spirit, those who are repented, who dedicate their revering love to his word. Brothers and sisters, if we're living that way in our daily lives, we will living in the spirit and will not satisfy the desires of our flesh. Then we'll walk in the spirit together with the saints, together with the church, we're living and walking in the spirit. In our walk, it is walk as in an army. Walk in spirit also together with the saints. Church preaching the gospel. What will be our living like? Will be separate from the church? No. We'll be walking in the same pace together with all the saints in oneness, in one accord. Together we'll be preaching the gospel to gain people, to bring those people to the church. For what? For them to be built in the church life, to be built in the body of Christ. We may also be perfected, also grow in life, also to be prepared for the coming kingdom, to be prepared for also to receive the reward in the Lord's coming. But to walk in the Spirit is a secret. It is a way for us to walk in the kingdom of heavens and to fulfill the requirements and to have a living that satisfy our God. That is why, brothers and sisters, in Matthew 6, chapter 6, the Lord continued and led the disciples to pray. When he taught the disciples to pray, he said, in this manner, therefore, pray. Matthew 6, 9. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, our God, He is above all things. He is the heavenly Father. He is the source of all things. This whole universe was created by him. He has a strength and power. As we saw on Monday, David prayed in this way after bringing his offerings to the temple, brothers and sisters. He prayed. He is the Father who gives all things. He is the God of the universe, the source of all things. David prayed. Who are we to bring all these things to you? For everything that we bring, actually we received from you. Brothers and sisters, this is the meaning. We need to realize that when we pray to our Father in heaven, He is the source of all pleasure, He is the source of all joy, He is the source of all things. We have nothing apart from Him, we have nothing without Him. Brothers and sisters, that is why today, we depend on him. The Lord continued praying. If we are those who do the will of God, he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As God, as king, the kingdom people need to be worried and involved in fulfilling his will. One who is worried about fulfilling his will not fall for the deceit of the riches of this earth and covetousness on this earth because he's living to do the will of God. This is the reason today the Lord is saving us. He wants to take us to, to do his to live his will. And then he continues uh, give us this day our daily bread. It is quite interesting the Lord tells us to, to ask for the daily bread. Meaning that we don't, we should not be anxious, worried about our livelihood, because in fact, the Lord is the one who cares for us. Let us trust the Lord. He didn't say for us to ask the bread for the month or for the year or for the whole semester, for the whole year. No. He, he said, you can pray to ask for this day our daily bread it does mean that the Lord will be caring for us day by day. The Lord is caring for us every and each day. And finally, He says, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Hallelujah! The Lord also wants us to practice forgiveness. Saints, in our natural man and our fallen man, in the earthly plane, we have difficulties to forgive. We still 
hold grudges in our heart, and it is difficult both to forgive and also to ask for forgiveness as well. It is difficult for the natural man, but when we turn to the Lord, when we turn to the Spirit, brothers and sisters, what happens, this life of our Heavenly Father enables us to forgive and also enables us to recognize our mistakes, to ask for forgiveness when we made a mistake. This will lead us to live the reality of the Kingdom of Heaven, will lead us to be overcomers when the Lord returns and to receive the reward. Brothers and sisters, that is why the Lord teaches us to pray. He teaches us to pray, even saints, the prayer He taught us. He admits that we are worried about our daily lives here, with our earthly lives. Saints, we should not worry too much, because our body here, we need to care for our body, just to do the will of God. We need to care for our life on earth. We care for our body to have a good health, have a healthy living for what? To do the will of God. And then on Friday, we see that our body is exactly for that, to do the will of God. We cannot waste our time worried about too much with the things on this earth, because our body on this earth one day will pass away, and we'll be receiving a body of glory. A body that is not corruptible, body of resurrection. The body we have on this earth today, it is for us to do the will of God. It's to be told of righteousness today, to live for God. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, that is why let us worry today in doing the will of God. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 10. Here we read, But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. Everything that we are living on earth, one day will be done, will be done away with. What, in, what is perfect will come. What is perfect? Love. What God brought forth in us, what God caused, made in us, eternal. God is love. What He is working Himself into us, we are living the reality of the Kingdom of Heaven today, Everything that we are doing in God, we are doing in love, will remain. This will be eternal, will not last. Will last for, will, will, this will last for eternity. What we do today through our bodies must produce what is eternal. Let us walk in the Spirit. Let us preach the Gospel to people. Let us help others also to live in the Spirit. Let us help the saints that we know in the church life whom we're socializing and living with to, to live a life full of reality, live in the Spirit. Let, let us love one another, forgive one another. We ask for forgiveness when we offend somebody. This will draw eternal lines, lines of love in our living. Hallelujah! And thus living may be our living, producing fruits in the Kingdom of Heaven. Hallelujah! So, what, whatever we do today, through this body that one day will pass away, will be clothed with incorruptibility when the Lord comes. What we did today will follow us through eternity. Why? It was done in love, was done in God. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, let us live in this reality, live in the presence of our God. Allowing this God's life and nature to bring forth its fruits. Let us live through Him. He saved us for us to live through Him today. Hallelujah. Finally, on Saturday and Sunday, we saw a little bit of Matthew chapter 7. We finally entered in chapter 7 of Matthew. What is in chapter 7? In the beginning, He says, Do not judge. Matthew 7, here says, Judge not that you be, be not judged. We should not judge others and condemn others. For, because he says, For with the what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it, you use, it will be measured back to you. We all have our ruler, right? Our measure. What is our ruler? It's our standard. We think that we are righteous according to what we see. We want others to live also, but many times happens what is in the next verse. 
Verse 3. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but not consider the plank in your own eye? Uh, speck is very small, but the plank, it is a big piece of wood. We're like that. We we'll look at the speck in our brother's eyes, but we do not consider the plank in our eyes. That we, we don't look at our faults and our mistakes. We look and point shortcomings of others, see and point a finger, and we judge and condemn others. Oh, Lord, may you have mercy on us. May we live the reality of the kingdom. In the reality of the kingdom, we have light for ourselves to see our situation. We have love toward others to love people. That is why, brothers and sisters, we need to live fear and trembling on this earth. Second Timothy, Second Timothy 4, 8. There we see that uh, the Lord is a righteous judge and when he comes he will give to us the reward for those who love the reality of the kingdom of heaven. May we today not be judging others, but it will be those who have compassion, who have love for others. In Romans 14, there are some precious verses there. Paul says to us not to judge others. In these verses he says, Who are you who judge your servant? Who are you to judge another servant? Our brothers are not our servants. They are servants of the Lord Jesus. They are servants of the Lord, not ours. We must judge them. It's not us, but the Lord. He is the righteous judge. When we see the shortcoming of a brother or mistake of a brother, our, our reaction must be just one, to pray for him or her. Actually, brothers and sisters, we must also repent because we have the same sinful nature that our brother has. If he made a mistake, we can also make mistakes. We are sinners as he is. We must repent. If there is a situation of unrighteousness in the church. If there is a situation that you see as negative, what should you, should you do? Just pray. Let us give it to the righteous judge. He who is Lord in his time, he judges necessary, he will judge that situation. Otherwise, he is the Lord of his servants, not us. Let us not judge others, because if we judge, we'll also be judged. And with the measure that we judge, we will also be measured back will be judged back. So saints, let us allow the Lord to exercise his judgment. As for us, let us love one another. Let us have a broadened heart toward the saints, to welcome the saints, to welcome those who make mistakes, welcome those who word. Let us in Christ, as Christ welcomed them, let us also welcome them. What is that? This is a living, a walking in the kingdom of heaven. It is a living that pleases God according to the kingdom of heaven. So, let us not live in a hypocrite way as if we were righteous. In Luke 18, on Sunday, we have Luke 18 when speaking of that publican and Pharisee who were praying. The Pharisee was praying for him to himself. Uh, he said, Oh, God, be thankful for I'm not a sinner. Like the, God, I thank you that I'm not a, like other men, extortioners and just. I do everything according to the law. But the publican, the sinner, when he went to pray, he uh, standing afar off, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. Tell the God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and the Lord asked, who, uh, who was justified? Certainly, uh, he who humbles himself, repented in the spirit, poor in spirit, not trust in himself. That is why, dear brothers and sisters, dear brothers and dear sisters, let us pursue this heart 
humble heart as love, as in Philippians 2, verses 1 through 4. Brothers and sisters, what we need is to have compassion, to have mercy, to, be, to have the standard mercies. In the original Greek, the feeling that that was in the Lord Jesus, it is a splanking of Christ. His mercy, compassion, the capacity to put himself in other shoes, other people's shoes. He's the Lord Jesus. He, even being God, even being the one who lived a righteous life, he did not judge us. He did not condemn us. He loved us. He had compassion on us. Thus life of God, thus divine life, full of compassion, is in our spirit. We walk in spirit. We live in the spirit. With a humble heart, a broken heart, repented, brothers and sisters, who have this life and nature of God leading us to have compassion from one another. Colossians 3, 12 and 13. We also see that we need to be filled with this uh, tender mercies of Jesus. For what? To love the brothers and sisters, to care for them, to forgive them, the saints. And then we will be able to live the reality of the kingdom of heavens. These tender mercies will lead us to be overcomers. The Lord returns. This is the way to walk in the kingdom of heaven. May this week, Lord, fill you with his tender mercies for you to live the church life, for you to live on this earth looking at people. We love them and to bring them to know the Lord to live in the kingdom of heaven. May the Lord bless you, bless your family, bless your home, may all of us to live the reality of the kingdom of heaven today. May we enter in its manifestation when he returns. Jesus is Lord.